Today we're taking a look at this lens, which is the Sony 18-200 f3.5 to 6.3. And this lens is already 14 years old. But that doesn't mean it's a bad lens, because of course it's just glass that they put in front of a sensor. So you can still get great results with this lens in 2024. But should you still buy one of these lenses? Let's find out. You can buy them used for about 300 euros, which is definitely not cheap, but it's also not crazy expensive when you consider how much of a zoom range you have with this lens. The build quality of this lens feels great. It is sadly a bit heavy, so when you have it on your camera, you definitely notice it's there. And when you hold it with a small grip on an APS-C camera, it's definitely very front heavy. So you want to use this with two hands. I'm just not a big fan of the silver color of the lens, but it does have two lens rings. One is for the focus and one is for the zoom. You can turn the focus ring infinitely and it is focused by wires and the zoom ring is very smooth. So that means you can get some nice slow zoom ins if you have stable hands. But if you want to, you can also zoom in really fast. So it has a lot of versatility. But keep in mind that when you zoom that the lens extends and contracts. So this isn't a good lens for gimbals. And the zoom range is 18 to 200 millimeters in APS-C terms, which means a 27 to 300 millimeter in full frame equivalent. So that's an 11 times zoom, which is a really nice distance. But of course you lose out on your aperture because of this, because F3.5 to 6.3 is really dark and once you start zooming in it also goes down in the aperture once you are at 50 millimeters it is already at f5 and when you go above 100 millimeters it will stay at 6.3 so you won't be able to get a lot of background separation with this but you can still get some background blur once you get into lower light situations this isn't great and because it's an APS-C lens you probably pair it with an APS-C camera which most of the time don't have the best low light performance so when it gets dark outside you will start to see a lot of noise because of the dark aperture when you zoom in and out with the lens ring you will hear a slight noise with the zoom so it won't be completely quiet in your recordings and the minimum focus distance of the lens isn't that good so it's not meant for macro work it has a 30 centimeters minimum focus distance at the wide end and fully zoomed in it's 50 centimeters it's definitely not as good as a macro lens so if you do macro or product photography then this is definitely not the lens for you also the lens sticks out from the bottom which means that when you put it on a table it won't lay completely flat and it has a 67 millimeter front thread for filters so you can put an ND filter on the front or something else also because it's a big lens you need to use a lens cap but that's the case with most lenses because it's an older lens the autofocus system isn't that amazing it's definitely not completely terrible and especially when you pair it with a sensor that has really good autofocus then the autofocus is completely fine but it won't have the newer autofocus features so the AF transition speed isn't available and what I've noticed with the autofocus on this thing is when it switches focus, the lens does it pretty smoothly and it won't really quickly focus on the different subject. So it has a nice transition and sometimes it just takes a bit of time for it to find focus compared to other lenses. But because the aperture isn't that large, that also compensates for the worse autofocus. The lens also has built-in optical steady shot and that's also why this lens is a bit bigger compared to some other lenses. The optical stabilization in this thing is definitely good. It won't be amazing, it won't replace your gimbal, and it isn't as good as the stabilization in some of the Sony Handycams, for example the Sony AX53. But it definitely does compensate for a lot of shake, but of course you will still get that handheld look. And when you are at the full 200 millimeters, it will be a bit harder to keep it stable. The sharpness of the lens is also good, but nothing amazing. You can also see that at the fully telephoto zoom, it will be a little bit soft, but it's definitely not bad either. And what's also nice is that the distortion of this lens isn't that much. Luckily these days we do have in-camera corrections that fixes all the distortions. So should you still buy this lens in 2024? I'm not sure if this is the best option out there for the money because the autofocus isn't amazing and the aperture isn't amazing either. And if you don't need the 11 times optical zoom, that something like the 18 to 105 millimeters might be a better option because that has a constant f4 aperture. And this lens is already pretty old. Just keep in mind that this lens does have its limitations. Do you still own this lens or are you planning on buying one? Let me know in the comments down below and thank you so much for watching.